Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I wanted to do a video talking a little bit about how I do meal planning using Plan to Eat, which is the website I'm on right now. Uh, part of the reason I wanted to try and get this up before Thanksgiving is because they're having a 50% off Black Friday sale, um, which I'm switching over so you can look at it really quick. Every year this is when I renew my subscription. Usually it's somewhere around $38 or so for the year. It's $19.50. If you already have a subscription, this allows you to go ahead and add on an extra year at the end of your current subscription. If you want to give it a try, you can create a free trial that goes for 30 days. If you buy a subscription at the 50% off rate at the end of your 30 days, that's when that kicks in. wanted to make sure I got this up. And full disclosure, I am an affiliate. So the link in my description box will be an affiliate link. And it basically is just a credit towards me being able to renew my subscription. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Even if I wasn't an affiliate, I definitely would be talking about this because I love this program. All right, so let's jump back over and talk a little bit about how Plan to Eat works, and then I'll show you what I do. The main screen that you get into every time you open it is the My Recipes screen. It comes up organized by courses, so you can see I have quite a few <laughs> recipes in here already. Because there are so many, a lot of times I'm going to filter them. Usually it's by course, so if I'm planning dinners, which I am most of the time, I'm going to jump to anything that's just the main course. All right, so here you can see these are everything that I have listed as a main course. Now, inside of each recipe, you can actually add tags. And to be honest, the tags I find are actually the most helpful part. The three main tags that I use are instant pot, so if it's something that can be cooked in a pressure cooker. I have one for slow cooker, so if I'm looking for a slow cooker meal. And then paleo, which generally means that it's, for the most part, dairy-free and grain-free. So it doesn't have wheat or anything like that in there. Sometimes it's not strictly paleo. Sometimes they'll have potatoes, which is one of those iffy things. Some people think it's part of that diet. Some people don't. Sometimes it'll have legumes in it. So I guess technically primal is the better word for it. If, again, if you're familiar with a paleo versus primal eating styles, but paleo is what I started using. So that's the tag that I use. Most of the recipes I have gotten from a website. So you'll actually see that there is a website here and it will link to the website if you click on it. But I don't go and take pictures of food. Like if there's a picture, it's because I was able to download it from a website. Or right, here's what a recipe looks like. You have a cooking view, which is something that's a little bit larger and it's easier to see. You can do a step-by-step -step so that it makes it a little easier to see exactly what you should be working on at any given time. This is nice because I usually will pull this up on either my phone or my iPad iPad while I'm cooking, so that way I don't have to try and decipher something that's a little bit smaller. Um, it has a spot for you to put a rating in, which is kind of a running joke in my family because my husband very rarely gives things five stars. Four stars basically means he really likes it. Five stars means he'll ask me to make it over and over again. Um, I very, very rarely get uh, something that's five stars, and so sometimes I will rate it as five stars even if he doesn't, and we just move on. You can scale a recipe. Obviously this I don't think came with how many it actually served. So it defaulted to one. Um, it has prep notes. I actually use the prep notes usually if I need to marinate something or if like this one is good with leftovers from another meal so that I know if I'm making the stroganoff, then I also want to make a couple days before the Italian style slow cooker roast and then use the leftovers on this. Um, there's a good, there's a spot for comments and personal notes. You can add nutritional facts. Again, usually that's something that I get from a website. Sometimes I will go ahead and plug in the recipe into my fitness pal and get the nutritional information that way. Obviously, I know that it's not exact, but it allows me to get an idea of what the basic nutritional elements are. And I'll show you where that nutrition comes in in a little bit. All right, so there is several different icons here. We'll talk a little bit about the queue in a second. You can actually add it to the planner and then you can open cooking view straight from here. So that's what the recipe section looks like. Now the queue is what I actually adjust seasonally. Uh, this is like my short list of things that I know I will probably want to be making over the next month or two. So again, I'm usually mostly planning dinners. So you'll see these are things that are more of a winter type of meal. So beef tacos, actually that's a staple from season to season, um, but braised beef shank, slow cooker chili, um, pulled pork, beef stew. Those are things that are a lot of times recipes that are kind of more wintry. So here's a recipe that I actually have not taken off yet. It's grilled Thai coconut lime skirt steak. Yes, we live in California, but I'm generally not going to think about grilling over the fall and winter months just because 
it gets dark so early and it's not much fun to grill outside when it's dark. So I can actually remove that from the queue just by clicking on the check mark and it disappears. So that's pretty much how easy it is to add to the queue. You can actually do it inside the recipe as well. Um, up on the upper right side, there's actually a thing where it says add to queue. So this gives you an idea of what sorts of things I have in my list. Obviously, I make a lot of soups <laughs> this time of year as well. I'll make a big pot of soup at the beginning of the week and we'll eat off of it for the rest of the week. All right, so usually what I'll do when the seasons change is I will go in and adjust everything that's in my queue. So I'll go in, delete things that don't really fit in with the season anymore, and then I'll go through and actually search recipes and add them in. So let's say I have a kale sausage and potato soup that I wanna add in. So I'll click on kale sausage, type that in. And this is the kale sausage and potato soup that I usually make. And you can see I've actually already added it in to the queue. So I'll go through and search for the recipes that I know we usually eat that season. And then I will a lot of times click and search for other recipes, usually by tag. So actually this is searching inside of my queue. So I will actually need to search inside of my recipes because <laughs> I want to see from the broader list of everything that I have. So paleo, so you can see 216, it's quite a few, but I can also narrow it down in there. So I'm looking for main courses and then I'll look through and see what all looks interesting to me. This is actually really good. I've made it a time or two, the Coquavine Blanc. And I suppose if you really wanted to be organized about it, I could go in and add tags to meals that are, I feel, very specific to a season. So that is an option as well. Actually, there's a roasted chicken recipe that is from Against All Grain, this one here. That's really good. Um, usually what I'll do is cook one or two chickens at the same time. Um, the vegetables underneath it are really, really good. And then you use the leftovers and a few other recipes. There's a soup recipe that it can go into. But I really definitely recommend uh, Stanielle Walker and her book's called Against All Grain, Meals Made Simple. But she's really good at using the leftovers from one meal to make it into something else. So if you're a family that doesn't like eating leftovers as is, she's really good about reusing things. All right, so let's jump back to the queue. And then from here, usually we're where I will end up going straight to plan. Once the season, I'll go in and adjust my queue, but then I have the meals already ready to go. All right, so you can see I've actually started working on some meal formation for this week. If you haven't watched a previous video, I'm actually in Illinois at my in-laws house. This is not kind of my normal meal planning sort of situation. We're actually celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow on Saturday. So actually technically, I have to tell you the truth, I had no idea what time it was when I was working on this yesterday. Ugh. I'm going to move these around. So you can see how easy it is to actually move things between days. You just grab a hold of this, these little four arrows and move it to the day that you want it to be on. And then these, you can either add an ingredient. So let's say I was making hard boiled eggs, but I wanted to make sure the eggs made it onto my shopping list. You can actually add it there or just a note that means that it doesn't get added to your shopping list, which is actually up here under shop. So how it works. So a couple of things about the planning is you can click on this and duplicate the recipe. So if you want to make something on one day and then have leftovers on a different day, you can do that. The trick is you change the servings to zero, which actually keeps you from having twice the number of ingredients added to your shopping list. Because if you just duplicate it and you have two recipes that each serve six, then you end up with ingredients that will serve a total of 12 on your shopping list, which isn't always what you want. So I'm going to do Duplicate this one more time and pull this down to next week. And most of the time it will revert it back to the original serving size. The quick way to check that is there is a servings button up here. So then it will automatically pull up the number of servings. So that way you can quickly see if you've changed all of them or not. All right, so let's take a look at this next week. By default, it pulls up all of your recipes. I usually just work straight off the queue and then I can scroll down. It'll tell you if you've planned anything recently, so that way you can tell if it's something you've had. You'll see, it'll tell you how many times you've planned it in total, so you'll see my favorite recipes. <laughs> Those are the ones that you see quite a bit of, the kale sausage and potato soup, 36 times. And I don't always plan a meal in here, and so actually more than that, we eat it quite a bit. So just looking, I will actually probably start planning for the end of the week, because that's when I will actually be in control of what we're eating. So that roasted chickens with thyme gravy actually sounds really good for next Sunday. And we will be home because Saturday we're actually doing Thanksgiving at my mom's house.
we are actually on the 29th. That's when our uh, bulk meat order comes in because we order a split side of beef every year, year and a half or so, which is essentially a quarter of the bulk meat from a cow and then a side of pork. So those we are actually picking up on the 29th. Definitely need to pay attention to what we have in the freezer and get it out of there. I think we have two chickens, so I'll probably make both of them on this day here. Let's duplicate this because the other standard that we usually do is that whatever we have for dinner, we usually do for lunch the next day. So that's the other reason why, even if it serves four, six, or eight, that I leave it because we'll go ahead and eat them as leftovers. So we'll put this here, change it to zero so I don't end up with twice the number of ingredients. I think I'll plan Oh, no. Let me remove that because that's a crock pot and there is actually an instant pot chicken noodle soup. Thank goodness for autocorrect. <laughs> All right, so we'll put this here and I'm actually going to click on it, which will bring up the actual recipe. Come over here and add to queue. So that way it's in my queue for next time. And I'll duplicate it. And then come up here and add it for lunch the next day. All right, so Wednesdays I usually work from home, so I usually will make something that's a little more involved on that day. Sometimes, sometimes not. Sometimes, especially if I'm home after being gone for quite a bit, which is really and truly what's been happening. Sometimes I will not make something that evening, <laughs> which will um, kind of give me a little bit of a break. So because I will have cooked so much, I think I'll just make a note that we'll do leftovers this day. And I do know we have chicken thighs that need to be eaten up, so I think I will add this here. actually this is what I want the garlic herb chicken thighs and again I kind of do this as I go but I could just click on that servings button up at the top just to verify pretty much everything at lunch is zero so the reason why I do like making sure that the nutritional information is included is because it does keep a total of the nutritional information at the bottom so if all of your recipes have nutritional information then it will add everything up of course the recipes I have here don't really have the nutritional information for two so I'm just going to duplicate this and put it here because I probably will go ahead and have that for lunch. So you can see now between these two meals, it's 1,099 calories. They'll give you the total fat, protein, and carbs. So it does keep track of the macro for you if you are doing any sort of tracking of macros. So because of that, you can actually go in if you wanted and add a recipe, quote unquote, for something like hard boiled eggs, where you enter the macro information. That way it will add it in for you. I don't think I've gone that far because I actually will pull the information in again. I track it in my fitness pal, not here, but but if you're trying to track it kind of on a weekly basis and see where you end up, you can do that in here. Usually I grocery shop and menu plan on Saturdays. So this is probably as far as we will get. Usually we eat out on Fridays. And in all honesty, we'll usually do like brunch out on Saturday and dinner on Saturday out. And then we eat in on Sundays. But by then I will have planned what we're doing. So usually when I'm menu planning, it's like Saturday to Friday. All right, so let's take a look at the shopping list. But I'm going to want to do a custom range. So I will select that and then come in and put in the dates. So we're looking at the 25th to December 1st. Save range. And now this will pull in all of the ingredients that we need for the cooking. Some A few things to keep in mind. It will combine things together. So if you are really picky about making sure it gives you everything all in one, you'll want to go in and modify your recipes. So as opposed to saying half pound and five large, you would either put all of this into a pound equivalent, but otherwise it brackets them together. So you know, hey, I'm getting carrots and I can mentally add these together. Same thing with celery. This is celery and this is celery stalks. So brackets them together because they're both celery but that way you can add two stalks three that's a total of five now it will also tell you what recipes it's related to um, the a2 means that it appears a second time but if we click on this you will see that it's only a total of two stalks of celery which is all it's telling you to get so you can see that it didn't actually add it in there twice it's even though it lists the recipe being on there twice it only includes the ingredients for one time of the recipe so again it groups together the garlic it groups together the onion there are a few things that 
will be included on a recipe that isn't something you actually want to use as shopping. So it includes an onion, but then you're supposed to take the onion, celery, and garlic out and reuse that in a different part of the recipe. So that's not technically something you need. So you can either click on the checkbox if you're doing multiples, or you can click on the little delete button here. So essentially it doesn't delete it, it just hides it from your shopping list. I usually say, don't ask me again, and then click confirm. Now you can divide things up into grocery stores. Um, I used to do that quite a bit. Now I just try and as I come across it, add it all into one like favorite store section. There are certain things I only buy at certain stores, um, namely, I usually get my any sort of nuts from Trader Joe's because it's much cheaper, but I shop at various grocery stores. So unless I know something is specifically cheaper at one store versus another, then I'm going to just leave it on a master list and not worry about it being included at a specific store or not. All right, so that's how the shopping planner works. I do have an app that is just the shopping list, so you can use that. Um, because this is web-based, you can also pull it up specifically on the web browser on your phone, so you don't have to try and remember. You can print these off. You can actually print the whole menu plan as well. That being said, if you use the same menus over and over again, you can also save a week as a menu plan and then you can just drag it in and reuse it. So I usually view things a month at a time, but you can also do a week at a time as well. And that narrows your focus down to that single week and you can't really scroll up and down. Now they do have uh, meal planner options, so you can display time sections or not. I always start my planning on Mondays because that's kind of how my weeks start in my head, um, but you can change it if your weeks in your head start on a Sunday or if you know that you start menu planning as of a different day, you can change that. And then you can change it to be both the monthly and the weekly planner start on the same days. Um, you can change what's included. So maybe if you're on a program like Weight Watchers where they have points, you can put in the nutritional score or points, and then you can track at those as well. If you want to track cost or sugar, um, they have any number of things you can add in there. You can change your time zone. You can actually pull in your menu plan into your calendar. So if you want to pull it into, uh, say, your Google calendar, you can do that as well. And then you have the option of how you see your meals, whether it's as an all-day event or if it's at a meal plan time. Let's say that you have put in a whole menu and you really don't want <laughs> to delete everything one at a time. You want to clear out the whole week and start over. If you click on edit plan, you can actually go ahead and delete the whole week all at one time. Now this is also the same place where you can save a menu. So say for example, you had a whole week of meals, everybody loved them and you want to save it for later just for ease of planning. You can actually save those recipes kind of as a bulk section. So let's say we want to save the 25th to December 1st. It'll actually highlight the days for you. You can give it a title. Hit confirm and it'll save it. Now where you will find those is under menus. What I could do, let me actually change this back to the monthly view so I can scroll. So let's say I want to do it again the following week. I can actually click and drag this over to this week drop it and it will add all of the menu of plan items to that week. Now, I don't want to keep it there, so I'm going to hit undo, which will take it off. But you can see I have another menu plan that's here as well. And I'll just hit confirm because this is actually a really good example of how you can see the total number of calories. So again, not everything has a nutritional value on here, but you can see what was planned for breakfast. It all has nutritional values. We have lunch and then dinners and then some other snack sort of information. And you can see what the total number of calories are here at the bottom. Now, again, I don't necessarily want this here. Oops, I don't actually want this here. So I'm going to click on edit plan. I'm going to delete everything from December 4th to December. 10th, click confirm, and it will all go away. So now that's undone. Now the other thing that you can do is if you are doing maybe like a once a month meal prep slash cooking session, you can actually put things into the freezer. So this would be nice. You could drag a whole bunch of recipes over to one day, or if you wanted to do them on one week, and then you would actually add them to the freezer. So let's say I wanted to add this to the freezer. You click on the recipe, click add to freezer, and tell it how many meals you want to freeze. So let's say I want to make freeze four meals, and then you can tell it how many servings per frozen meal. So let's say maybe there's one serving. 
So then you click Add to Freezer, and you can see that there's now four meals that are here listed as being in the freezer. So this is nice if you want to keep track of what you have in the freezer, and then menu plan out of things that are frozen. So then to use it, you just click and drag it over, and you'll see that now it says three instead of four, and it'll also indicate frozen recipe. If you remove it from your menu plan, you'll see that it actually comes and adds it back in. So once you have something in the freezer, in case you forget that you have taken things out, you ate it without putting it on your planner, you can actually go in and adjust the number of servings that are left. Or if, like me, you forgot you had something in there and then three years later you need to throw it out, you can either adjust the number down or if you put zero and hit update, then it will delete it completely. If you are making a large batch and you need and you plan on eating one of those servings that evening, you can actually plan it like this, add it to the freezer. Let's say you're making four servings, excuse me, four meals, one serving, add to freezer, and then you're planning on eating one of those the same day, then you can drag it over from the freezer, and then that will leave you with three. So if you look, then there's only one of these on the shopping list, because if you're cooking from the freezer, it's assuming you've already purchased the recipe ingredients and cooked it. So I'm going to remove these off. That's pretty much how I do my menu planning. Obviously, it doesn't normally take me this long every single time. I've been step by step how I look at stuff, how I include things. Um, I do want to show you really quick. If you look up here, I have save recipe, um, plan to eat. So they have something you can add to your browser toolbar. So if you want to add a recipe in from a website, you can do that. So let me go to Daniel Walker's website. I'll show you how easy it is to do this. Let me click on recipes. So we'll click on the paleo pumpkin chia seed pudding. If you'll scroll down, you'll see that she's used some sort of a recipe plugin so that it's formatted. So if we click on the save recipe, it will open up a little window in the corner. Okay, so what shows up is this little window, and it'll tell you that it's been successfully imported. I usually scroll down and just make sure everything is there. Usually if it isn't able to grab um, ingredients and directions, it will let you know, but I always like to double check. And I always like to make sure that the picture that is on there is something that matches something on here. Every once in a while, it'll grab some sort of a strange picture that isn't what I want attached to the recipe. So then you can click on change photo and it'll pick something else. But most of the time it will grab all of the servings. If there's some sort of like a yield size of one loaf or something similar, it'll pull that in. And the directions, every once in a while, there will be some information that's in a description that's part of the website. You can actually just copy and paste that into the recipe down here if you want that, that information. And then from there, you can adjust the course, any sort of cuisine, if there's a main ingredient that you want to add a note to. You can add a tag, so like I would tag that it's paleo. And sometimes there is nutritional information that it's, is included. Many times that will copy over. If it doesn't, then you can just hand type it in. Just because, I don't know, pumpkins, chia seeds. I haven't quite decided how I feel about chia seed pudding yet, so I'm just going to delete that. I don't necessarily need it imported into my recipes because I know where to find the recipe if I would like to make it at a different time. So that's how you actually will add a recipe from a website, which makes it really easy to do. And a lot of times I'll be on a website and I'll see a bunch of recipes I like and I'll just bulk add them in. That being said, if you import something from a website, it will actually automatically include the website information so that you can click and go through to the website. The nice thing about that is you can actually then as part of the search include recipes that came from that website. If you add the .com, it doesn't actually come up. I think the period actually confuses it a little bit, but you can search for the first part of the website and then actually see everything that came from that website and see that you have duplicates. <laughs> so because I have two, I actually don't need to, I can actually just permanently remove the recipe by clicking on delete click on confirm, and then now I only have one. Every once in a while, somehow I end up with two. Um, I guess that means I really liked the recipe, I don't know. So anyway, that is how I menu plan, that's how I adjust for things seasonally. When we get into spring, I'll start adding in some spring recipes. Usually what I try and do when I'm trying to decide what I'm going to make seasonally is I take into account what is in season as far as fruits and vegetables go. We do have a vegetable garden, so that's something else I take into account is what we are actually growing at any given time. So 
So during the summer, I'm making things that contain tomatoes during the winter um, because I do can the tomatoes during the summer, which always happens to be on the hottest day of the year. I don't know why that makes me miserable, but this year I ended up with 32 cans of tomatoes. So I have enough to use over the winter time. So I'm keeping in mind what we have so that I can use them up. During the winter and fall is usually when a lot of the greens are in season. So things like kale. During the spring, things like artichokes are in season. Asparagus is in season at that time. During the spring is when all the berries are in season. So usually that's when I'll start using those. During the winter, obviously I'll use frozen berries. Uh, we don't actually grow anything ourselves, but I keep in mind what might be cheaper at the grocery store. Pretty much nowadays you can get anything at any time of the year. You'll just end up paying more for it, but it hurts my heart to pay <laughs> so much for tomatoes during the winter because I know that I will have them coming out my ears in the, the summertime. So I try and only use things that are canned tomatoes during that time. It helps. I don't like raw tomatoes too. So that's kind of how I figure out what it is that I'm eating. Also during the spring and summer, I'm wanting things that are lighter, so more salads. Tuna salad is something that I really enjoy eating during the summertime. And then during the winter, I'm wanting something that's a little more comfort food, a little heavier. So that's when we do soups and stews. Roasted meats during the summer is when we'll usually grill. So things like grilled steak, grilled chicken, that sort of thing. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, I would appreciate you giving it a thumbs up. I do have quite a few videos that I have planned that are coming up. During the month of December, I am working on putting together videos focused on goal setting more from a practical standpoint because there's so many videos on how to set goals. This will be more about putting the goals into place. Really and truly, nobody tells you, okay, you have a goal. How do you break it down and put it into something that's actionable? In December, I'm hoping to actually post a little more often. It'll be a combination of vlog and getting ready for uh, the new year. Quite a bit of good stuff that's coming. Definitely please subscribe so you'll be notified when I have new videos coming out. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'm happy to answer questions. And again, just as a reminder, there's that 50% off sale for Plan to Eat, and that runs from Black Friday all the way through Monday. And you do get a 30-day free trial with Plan to Eat as well. So even if you're not sure if you want to use it, go ahead and do a free trial and see if it's something you like. I really like this one because it's on the web. I don't have to sync with anything. It's already out in the cloud. So it makes my life a little easier and I can give my husband access to it. We can share the shopping list. That makes life a little bit easier. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.